Hey guys, I'm really excited. I wanted to hop in uh, before the video started and give you a quick heads up as to what you're about to see. Number one, uh, this video is in response to uh, Mark and Scott. They sent me an email that was similar and I actually read it within the episode um, about how to do a 15 minute wash and a maintenance wash and they asked very uh, intricate things about how the product works. How does it feel? How does it come out? What is it? You know, all these kinds of things. So I had to talk a lot about and describe that on camera. So be a little uh, forewarned on that. Number two, is I was originally just gonna use a stopwatch or a timer on your on your iPhone, click the button, and then just do a voiceover as I could, you know, sort of prove 15, 20, 17 minutes, whatever it took. Um, but in the act of doing that as I recorded it, it didn't work out uh, well. Uh, maybe I'll do one in the future, but I couldn't answer Mark and Scott's specific questions um, by doing that, you know, doing it that way. So, anyways, uh, if you guys wanna uh, have me do something on camera or I just can't put it into words or you know you can't describe it call me or email me whatever and I'll try to shoot a video to answer that specific question so I'm kind of having fun with this so I wanted to give you a little bit of an update before you hopped in and watch this video and say hey what was going on in Larry's mind when he shot this this is why I shot this particular video so anyways thanks for watching and I hope you enjoy Hey guys, on today's episode, we're gonna be talking about a maintenance watch, which typically takes about 15 to 20 minutes to do when your car is not super filthy like this one, nor is it really clean. Now, in the process of that, we have two options. We can do it with water, which I have here, or without. So I'm gonna put a strip of tape down the middle. We're gonna do two sides and you'll see the difference. But if you have access to water, of course, like I always say, use water. So we're gonna go over these steps today. It's super simple, 15, 20 minutes, you're gonna have your car looking perfect and you'll be back out on the road. That and a lot more coming up on this episode of Driving protect uh, all the way in so that they uh, touch our paint on can hear it okay so what's motivating me to shoot this particular video is I got a bunch of emails uh, in particular Mark and Scott um, and Scott says how do I maintain my vehicle when it's really not that dirty, but at the same time, it's not perfectly clean either. I don't want to use all my buckets, et cetera, and I'm limited on time. Do you have any recommendations for a quick, safe clean when the car is really not that dirty? So uh, this brings up a really good point. So in um, Connecticut, New York, New Jersey, we've gotten a lot of rain, but in the last couple of days, we haven't. It's been beautiful. It's like 85 degrees right now. This car is a great example because I put about 300 miles on it in the last couple of days, driving all around and doing things. And the front of the car has bugs all over it, the windshield bugs all over it, and uh, the, the wheels are a little bit dirty but not crazy and a little bit of spit up behind you know, each wheel, which is normal. So do I want to break out the buckets and the soap and the whole nine yards? Uh, I don't think it's necessary for this car. The thing I'm trying to get across on this video is there is a line in the sand, so to speak, where it's like, okay, I got to really foam it down. And, and wash it properly and agitate it properly just to bring to lift the dirt off because it's crossed that line. In this case, I think we're on the other side of the line where it's safe enough to either do two things, rinse it down first. If you have access to water, always rinse it down. Then you can use the aerator and frothy, then hydrate it and when you're done spit and you can do the windows. I mean, literally 15, 20 minutes, it's not that big of a deal. The, the, the fork in the road is whether you're gonna use water or not. And as I mentioned earlier in the beginning of the episode, uh, or the intro, I'm gonna put a piece of tape down the middle lightly, you know, I don't wanna scratch anything, just to kind of show like, hey, I'm gonna do one side of the car with water and one side without water, just to show you the difference if there is any at all. Typically, I need about two or three orange, two or three red, and usually three blue for, for the wheels. Okay, for step one, regardless of whether you're gonna be using a power washer or just uh, the aerator alone, because your car, or I'm assuming your car is gonna have a lot of bugs on, especially in the summertime, but if it does, I would recommend using uh, the aerator and frothy in particular. I'll post a video or a link up here um, to how to um, you know, do the correct ratios, but this is a 20 to one. So 20 uh, ounces of water to one ounce of frothy. You're gonna pump it up. So I'm first going to just let this sit. And the reason I'm gonna let this sit um, is just to let kind of soak up and loosen up the bugs because regardless of whether you're using a power washer or not, um, you're gonna wanna have to put a little bit of uh, moisture into these uh, bugs. As you know, bugs have chitin, which are their shells, um, and there's different ones and they, and they go at a different rate, meaning they can burn through the paint really fast or not at all. So I have no idea what bugs I have on here, but regardless, I'm gonna work you know, and be uh, as safe as humanly possible. So I'm just gonna let that sit for a second. Plus I'm in the shade, so if you were in the sun, you wouldn't have as much time. Usually you have two to three minutes um, to wipe this off. So I'm gonna let that sit for a second. Okay, I'm behind the camera now and I've given it a couple of minutes to kind of do its thing on the bugs, but this is a perfect example. So what's happening here is take, see my finger? Do you see that right there? 
that's the humectant, that's the lubricant that's protecting your paint. So when we're washing the entire thing, you're gonna get that, um, it's gonna make it uh, softer uh, or more lubricated as you're gonna be wiping it. It's just, a, it's a smart thing to do. But again, if you don't have bugs, just avoid this. But uh, so now uh, I'm gonna start power washing the rest of it and try to keep it as this side as possible. After a quick rinse on half the car, use the aerator to spray frothy on the entire half side of the paint because of the extra water now present and because it's out of direct sunlight, so it won't evaporate as fast. Immediately start wiping in a scooping motion and rotate the towel as it becomes full of contaminants. Continue to wipe until the frothy is mostly gone and the paint is contaminant free. Next, clean your wheels with a blue towel and add more frothy if it's beginning to evaporate. You typically have about a 3-5 to five minute window of time before you need to reapply if the wheels are cool to the touch. Afterwards, spray hydrate on a towel, massage it into the fibers, and wipe in straight lines to pick up the remaining frothy drips. Keep in mind, hydrate is designed to be thick and will be visible as it's wiped on the paint. It will absorb into the previous layers of protection on the paint, and any excess that's not absorbed can quickly be removed with a single wipe. Once the driver's side was completed, I stood near the front of the car and noticed a subtle difference from left to right. The untouched passenger side looked slightly wider or a smoky appearance, whereas the clean side now has a deep or rich glow. It's not rocket science, but hopefully the camera is catching the light as noticeable as it was in person for me. In fact, the camera I was using was having issues focusing on the clean side because of the increased reflection. It was going in and out. I couldn't find the right focus. So anyways, mission accomplished on the driver's side at least. Okay, so we've completed one side. Now, mind you, I'm filming, so it's taking a little bit longer, but trust me, it's about five or six minutes to do one side. Now, normally I would have done the entire car with the power washer because I'm at home, but we're doing this for test purposes, so kind of roll with me here. So let's do a quick recap. We rinsed it down. We knocked off 80, 90% of the, you know, little dust that's been on the car. Then we used the aerator and frothy. We foamed it up, lubricated the paint, used a uh, orange microfiber towel and scooped it up. Now you can use two, you can use one, you can use five towels. It depends on the size of the car and how dirty it is and how much you're rotating. So you're gonna have to use a little judgment on there. Once it was done, you know, there's always a little bit of pockets of, um, you know, uh, frothy and it's a little bit of drips here and there, totally normal. You're gonna come back with a red towel or whatever towel you want um, and use hydrate. Now hydrate, uh, for those of you not familiar, is a lubricant. So it's a thick, viscous, comes out. it's not like spray wax where it atomizes or it mists. This is a goop that you're gonna put either on your towel and you can now, um, with the new formulas, uh, put it on the paint. And basically what's going on is you're lubricating it, plus now we've really been pushing things, um, you're adding another layer of protection to it. So think of it this way, when you take a shower, you get in there and you scrub your skin, whatever, little bits of dead skin come off, everybody knows that. Same kind of idea, you know, I've, I'm scared of the YouTube comments now, but same kind of idea as you're washing and going through, this, the, the protection that's on your paint is slowly degrading. I think that's a fair statement. So by drying it the right way, lubricating it, you're not scratching it, plus we're leaving behind, um, you know me, I'm mental about my layers, we're putting a little tiny layer back on. So that's the idea of this whole regimen. If you're doing things properly, you know, you're washing it properly, you're removing a little bit just by default, we're gonna put it back. You're gonna remove it, you're gonna put it back. You're gonna remove it, put it back, that kind of concept. So when you're done with all this, I like to go back, um, if you have the time, um, again, this is a little added extra. This would probably be an extra minute or so. I'm using spit spray wax because I love to just kind of, I like to move my head up and down and kind of like see if I missed any spots or whatever because it's totally understandable if you're going to miss a spot. Go in with a red towel, touch it up, and it looks absolutely spectacular. Now, uh, with the windows, um, frothy, you can use a little bit of spit. It's not a window cleaner, so stick to, to designated window cleaners. I'm a big fan of that. Um, you see this little... Uh, uh, scrub pad here. If you have lots of bugs like I do, you're going to come in here, spray it down, use this as a lubricant, right? And come in and, and uh, you know, agitate the, that bug away. So that's, that's kind of the quick version of what I'm doing over here. We're going to repeat that, but this time we're going to take away the water and just use the aerator, then compare it at the end and let you guys process, hey, I live in an apartment, I'll just use an aerator, I'm at home, I'll use water, boom, and you're out the door. So this is not super complicated, but I wanted to go through it and answer the questions um, that a lot of you have been asking. On the passenger side, I did the same steps minus the initial water blast, saving me a few minutes, give or take. Wiped from top to bottom with an orange microfiber towel, and I used an extra towel compared to the driver's side that was pre-rinsed. 
added extra frothy to the wheels because, again, they weren't pre-rinsed, wiped and rotated the towel as it became full of contaminants faster than the other side, hydrated the remaining leftover frothy, spray waxed the drips, and I was done. Again, roughly 5 to 10 minutes, depending on the size of the car, the level of dirt, pre-rinsed or not, temperature outside, and how fast you're motivated to get the job done. Okay, so I'm finished with the maintenance wash and it took about 15, 20 minutes. Now remember, I'm filming, so it took a little bit longer. And I used uh, spray wax, which you can use or not use, it'll diminish your time. Plus, if you wanna use tire shine, add a few more minutes. Again, pick and choose, but ultimately, the point of this episode is not to, to do a car wash in three seconds, it's more to kinda of get your brain to think, okay, if I can maintain the car on a regular uh, basis, as opposed to doing these massive um, giant cleans all the time, once, you know, every six months, it, it may be better, uh, you know, for yourself because you get to drive a, a cleaner car. So there's a few things that you need to keep in mind, prerequisites with this whole video that we just shot. Number one, we're maintaining the paint. We said that a million times, but I have to have something to maintain to do a maintenance wash. What do I mean by that? I have layers of reflex. I have layers of skin on here. So there's protection and I'm only uh, scooping that dirt off uh, of the protection and doing it in this manner. So if you don't protect your paint, um, meaning like if you go to the gym one time a year, you know, you, you can't just be Superman all day long. You, you know what I mean? You have to go on a routine, which is why I call it a regimen, a disciplined way of doing things all the time. So that's prerequisite number one. Number two is I'm sort of doing it in the shade um, and it's a little bit, uh, you know, it's early morning, it's getting warm now. Um, but normally when I I was telling you guys the reason I can kind of decrease the amount of time and do it much faster is I know a lot of people, oh, that wasn't 15, 20 minutes. Okay, fine. Call it 20 minutes, 30 minutes, whatever it is. The idea is you're minimizing the amount of time uh, so you can do this on a regular basis. I was doing the entire car with the aerator, right? Shh, the tire side of it, where I've taught you in the past with you know some of the video links where you really want to do one or two panels at a time because it evaporates very quickly. But in this case, uh, because I, in particular I had water down here and it's shady and this is very cool, you can expand the amount of uh, space or surface area that you're doing with the uh, aerator and frothy, thus making it faster for you, if that makes sense. Keep in mind, you're gonna have a lot of dirty towels, so that's just part of it. The, the less water that you use, the more towels you're gonna use. A lot of e people email me and say, hey, well, you know, I'm using way too many towels. And I said, great, minimize the amount of towels, then increase the water. It's a zero sum game. If one goes up, meaning I'm not gonna use that much water, then, you know, or you're not gonna use this much water, then you're gonna have to use more towels. Okay, uh, you know, opposite. I don't wanna use a lot of towels. Well, great, then you're gonna use a lot more water. So something's gotta give, because the dirt has to be carried off. Now you can blow it off with the water, or you can and carry it off with the microfiber towels. You can't, you can't have your cake and eat it too. You gotta have to sort of negotiate with that. So you have six or seven towels that are now dirty. You throw, you know, you put them in the washer and you're all set. And I guess lastly, just for kicks, when I put this stripe down here, I don't know, I was trying to play around, but what we ultimately learned by the stripe is it's really annoying to clean around when you have a, a dumb piece of tape down the middle of it because they both look exactly the same and they're, they're very clean. Um, I just wanted to see if I could separate the two of them and see if I could find some difference between using the water or not. Ultimately, I think the water itself spraying is better, but if you don't have it, it's, it's fine as well. You're just gonna, like I said, increase the amount of towels that you're using. This side used, I think, one or two towels less because I had water, and the other side, uh, I didn't because I had something that was dripping. It was a lot of water dripping off. It was doing it on its own. Hopefully that, hopefully that makes sense. Then I answered uh, uh, Scott and Mark's question again. Thank you for asking that. If you guys have any questions, shoot me an email at larry at ammonyc.com. Thanks for watching.